everybody. I'm Mr. Fritz. And I'm uh, Mr. Doherty. All right, and we're going to do a demonstration of the Sublimation Observation and Investigation Lab. Woo! Fun times. <laughs> what is dry ice? All right, well, we've got some dry ice here. We can uh, hopefully hold this up. Show you. Got to have mittens on. Yep, mittens, goggles, you got right. it. I'm already right. about right. there. All right. This is, you want to go? No, go ahead. Go oh, ahead. I was say, this is a chunk of dry ice. Pretty big piece, too. Uh, this is carbon dioxide solid. Okay, and it's about, well, what temperature do we get? Well, let's find out. First, let's look at regular ice. A regular Oop, piece of ice is registering at, yeah, that one's kind of hard to see because it's going through and hitting my gloves. Normally, regular ice is at zero degrees Celsius. This has been registering at one degree Celsius. Is that a good spot? Yeah, let's check that one out. It's so cold that this doesn't register on here. Oh, there's a couple of spots that said negative 49 earlier. It's so low that this thermometer does not register it. It's crazy. But it's about, do you say about negative 50 degrees Celsius? That's what this is. What would that be in Fahrenheit? Really cold. Yes. Yeah, so we don't use really Fahrenheit. <laughs> we don't use the F word. All right. So what should we do with this? All right. I'll let me well, we should do some experiments, right? Well, let's do some experiments. Let's do some experiments. experiments. Now, we got this dry ice from Kowalski, so you can get there if you choose to do this lab at home. You need to have parent permission and supervision for this. You can't just go to Kowalski's and get dry ice yourself anyway. But you're going to notice that we're going to have protective glasses, and we're going to have thick kind of protective gloves because what happens is when this compressed, cold, cold, cold dry ice, which is, you know, compressed carbon dioxide touches your skin in your hand, it's not actually freezing it. What's happened is the thermal energy is leaving your hand so fast going into the dry ice, it feels like it's burning. So you don't want to touch it with your bare hands. Always wear, have protection with you, okay? Gloves, glasses, all that stuff. And that's Kowalski's, $1.69 a pound, not too bad. Good time. Uh, let's kick things off with our first experiment here. It's going to be called uh, dry ice in a baggie. So um, I'm going to start things off and put some water into our baggie. I'm going to check some things. And while that's happening, I think Mr. Fritz is going to get a chunk of dry ice. But I'm just basically putting some warm water into a baggie right now is what I'm doing. Close that off, and I just want to say, our baggie here it does help. I think if you get a double seal on the top, because some pretty cool things are going to happen. So we've got our baggie. Mr. Fritz here is going to yeah. drop in a chunk of dry ice. I'm going to seal this quick. I hope. There we go. I think we got it. We're here now. Nice and sealed. No gases are getting in or out. No liquids are getting in or out. Can you get the, uh, the the bubbles going on in there? Now that's not boiling, is it? Well, let's touch it to see. That is cold. That is definitely not boiling like we would think of it as. I better set this down. And... Can I do that? Mm -hmm. and this is, again, why you'd want to be wearing safety glasses if you are doing this at home, I bet. Is it all sealed up? I hear a I hear You hear a squeaky? Sealed as I can get. Oh, I can. It's it's leaking right there. But if I hold it, you still hear it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Got it. That's scary. Woo. That was pretty good. All right, well, let's see what happens when we pour this into the sink. Oh, look at that. Look at the carbon dioxide pour like a liquid. Does that mean it's more dense than the air? It is, a little bit, isn't it? It actually fills it up in there. Um, the stuff you actually see, though, is little frozen water crystals. Nice. Huh? Very nice. A little, little chunk in here. Can't let it go to waste. Oh, what we just saw was that the gas particles, well, they were a solid at first. When we added the water, it was actually adding thermal energy, and the particles were speeding up so fast they wanted to expand, and that's where you saw that vapor inside of the bag, and what happened? The gas kept expanding, expanding. There was nowhere to go because you know that gas doesn't have a definite volume. It definitely doesn't have a definite shape. Where did it want to go? It wanted to get out of the bag, and boom. Let's do another experiment that's similar to see what happens in a harder container like a film canister. Here for our second experiment, this is film canister. 
uh, for those of you uh, kids out there, a film canister is what uh, us old people used to do with our pictures. Now it's mm -hmm. uh, probably not so much anymore. But basically, it's just a container that we can close off. Um, this time, this container will not be able to get any bigger. Okay, so I don't know um, as far as like pressure. We haven't really talked much pressure yet, have you, Mr. Fritz? Nope, not much. Okay, well, we're going to learn a little bit about perhaps some pressure now. This little guy right here, that is a chunk of dry ice, which is a solid. Okay, and right now it's a little hard to see, but if you look real close, you might like to see like this little whispering clouds coming off of it a little bit. Um, it is actually right now turning um, into a gas, which is sublimating or sublimation right now. Um, hard to see because it is invisible. Mm -hmm. You actually see the fog, and that's just the water vapor in the air freezing. But if we take our, this is going to be hard with these gloves. <laughs> I'm gonna just do I need this? There we go. I'm gonna drop this. You can edit that, I hope. No. All right. And we're gonna try to pick this little guy up. These gloves are not very. Good. All right. I'm gonna drop that in there. Now remember, there's a gap. The next experiment we're going to do, we used to call it the screening spoon. So what I have is I have a bunch of different tools. And what you might notice is they're all metallic. And what's special about metallic things like that is that they are great conductors of heat. So what happens is if I touch something, while it feels cold to my hand, it's actually the thermal energy or the heat from my hand going through that. So I'm losing heat. Now what's crazy is that we have our dry ice here. Uh, the condensed carbon dioxide at a very, very, very low temperature. So what do you think happens when I touch the metal on that? Well, let's find out. So I have these tongs. These are just cheap aluminum tongs, but if I grab this piece, listen closely. Shh. Keep it down. Tell your siblings to be quiet. Let's listen to it again. Do you hear that? All that crackling and whistling going on? And look at this. There's frost, but how come there's frost on the side that the dry ice didn't touch? Let's think about that. We'll come back to that in a moment. What do I have? I have a screwdriver, so you gotta do some tools. Listen up closely. Let's try a hammer. Now, I'm not gonna smash it, but that was a great sound. What a weird sound. Let's try the copper piping. I could even grab these tongs and set it on here and make music, maybe. No, maybe not. Now, some people go, it's like a chalkboard. Oh. You notice that when I took the glove off, it was louder? So when I have more heat coming from my hands, and believe it or not, if you could feel this, if we were in class, you'd feel this, this thing is vibrating. When I'm touching this, it's, it's vibrating at such a frequency that that's what gives us the sound and the pitch. So what's happening is it's touches this, the heat leaves my arm, goes through this, but there's such a temperature drop between this that it causes this to vibrate and we get an audible sound. It's called the screaming spoon or scream middle. What happened to that washer? I have this washer. Let's see what happens when I put it here. Now that's crazy. So if you guys remember the frost that was on the outside of these tongs, well, what happened was that frost was actually uh, the water vapor in the room. And the water vapor in the room was bouncing into the metal. Now, because the, the, it was losing so much thermal energy going into the dry ice, it got really cold. And the gas from the air, which was water, went right from a gas straight into a solid, that little frost. We call that deposition. Do you guys remember the film canister? I, we left the dry ice inside of it. Now look at the outside. There's more deposition. That's frost. Now you guys would see that when you guys go to the school buses in the fall. You see frost on the leaves. Mr. Jordy's digging through buckets. 
but that's another form of deposition. Again, going from a gas straight to a solid. What happens is the water particles are flying, bouncing into there, and because there's so much more thermal energy or they're warmer, and they lose their energy so fast hitting this very low temperature canister, it turns right into ice. Are we doing dry ice in a fish tank next? Uh, yes, that's exactly what you got. <laughs> All right. Here. Been waiting for this for a while now. There we go. Uh, why don't you break it down for us, Mr. Fritz? Oh, well, right now we have this rectangular prism, which is a fish tank, and we have liquid water, a little warmer than room temperature, so there's a liquid in here. We've got regular air that you breathe. That's the gas in here, of course, this is a solid, but we want to add the dry ice, the condensed carbon dioxide, the very low temperature uh, piece of matter in here, so, and see what happens. What do you guys think is going to happen when we put some dry ice in here? I didn't hear you. Okay, nobody raised their hand all at once. Oh, yeah, we're not in school. Never mind. All right, so let's grab our dry ice. I'm going to grab a mitten because I don't want to freeze my hand. Yeah, I'm burn say, it. it does sting. It doesn't feel good. Okay, so we'll just drop a little piece here. Ooh, look at that. Again, you can find this at Kowalski. So if you and your family want to do these kind of experiments at home, again, parent supervision. Parents, if you're watching this, make sure you're watching your kids because they can hurt themselves. We do this under a lot of uh, scrutiny when we're doing it in school, we make sure. But we have this, you know what? I'm gonna grab the camera because I think they should see what this looks like. Get a little like. closer view. Yeah, this would be fun, something just to sit back and watch. Like a 30 second clip mm -hmm. of that. What do you observe here? Look at this. Yeah, just look how fast the, the bubbles are coming off of this. Mm -hmm. What do you got there, Mr. Doherty? I don't know. I found this in your in your room here. I'm kind of curious, Mr. Bubbles. Oh my God, uh, well, I do know that the uh, the dry ice here is carbon dioxide, and it's turning into a gas. So this is actually full of carbon dioxide gas, um, and carbon dioxide gas is a little bit more dense than the air. And if any luck here, we can maybe float a bubble on there, um, and maybe Fritz can kind of add in like the Y part. But let's just see if it works first. We might have got one. Look at this bubble. So now we have the solid at the very lowest because it's the most dense. Then you have the liquid warm water. You have this carbon dioxide gas in the gas state. That's actually heavier, oh, the bubble just popped, than the bubble which was full of the hot air in Mr. Doherty's lungs. Now let's see him blow another bubble. Oh, there's a ton of them now. Look at them bounce. Now these bubbles are floating on top because the air inside of them is actually less dense than the carbon dioxide gas right here. So that's why you see them floating on top of there. When they say gas, some people go, oh, gas is weightless. Wrong, wrong, you're wrong. The gas actually does have weight. You can see this is heavier than this. That's why these are floating on there. They're more buoyant. And that's all in terms with, you know, what's going on here scientifically. You have the lighter gas on top and then it gets denser and denser, heavier and heavier until you get to the bottom. And look at this. It's still... People go, it sounds like boiling. No. That is the carbon dioxide going from a solid straight to a gas. When the people go, why doesn't it become a liquid? Because it doesn't have time for it. It has no chance. It just goes bam right into the gas state. Amazing. We go. This is a little extra. We had a little extra time. Um, we uh, have this, uh, under this barrel here. Um, and what we did is poked a hole in the barrel um, and ran a tube outside here. And 
filled it with well, about half, about a quarter of the way with warm water, and then we threw in a chunk of dry ice. So just like with the uh, fish tank over there, um, we've got you know all the, the fog coming off like this. But if we take it and we can channel it so it goes out our tube, can you see that there? Mm -hmm. Kind of coming out. Ooh, it's effervescent. Yeah, it's pretty cool. You can kind of feels kind of nice, you know. And if you get it so it's not too strong, not too weak, kind of that, uh, what is it, the baby bear story, whatever. Yeah, right in the middle. And you dip it in some soap. You can get some really kind of cool things happening here. So if it's too slow coming out, you can tighten a little, little bit. And you get these little kind of mini soap bubbles. You know, boo you, bubbles. Yeah, I've heard, heard them referred to as boo bubbles before, yes. I played Mario a lot. There we go. And look at that. It kind of bounce. Kind of the cool thing is trying to catch it. The oil on your hands will, uh, you know, burst the bubbles. But if you have gloves or a towel, you should be able to capture them, which is kind of cool. I like those uh, old, like those cheap winter gloves are the best for this. It's kind of fun to see just how big you can go. So Ooh, those bubbles. these bubbles are, uh, you know, or these little soap bubbles are filled with carbon dioxide gas. What happens if I poke it? Watch this. What happens in slow mo. You should get one. All right, folks, so here's the conclusion of everything. Uh, you guys know in your experience of life about things that you know melt, go from a solid to a liquid. You guys have seen things that go through vaporization, things that go from a liquid to a gas when you boil noodles for macaroni and cheese, or you see a puddle evaporate. You might even see condensation on the outside of your bottle. You know about that, and you froze stuff. If you put any water in the freezer, you get ice. But something you might not be familiar with, sublimation and deposition. What do you think? I Well, I, you summed it up pretty well. I, it's not something you see every day, that's for sure. So if you didn't get a chance to do this at home, you know, watch the video. I, I thought uh, that you got to see some pretty fun things. And then mm -hmm. um, if you do get a chance to do it, um, it's fun stuff to play with. Yeah, if you guys do get some dry ice, take a video, take a picture, send it to us so we can check it out, okay? Uh, for Mr. Doherty, Mr. Fritz, I want you guys to have a scientific day. Bye-bye.